Welcome to another DK Custom Products video. I'm Dwayne and this is Kevin. And as some of you guys know, uh, we like to test things. And we also like to talk about the benefits of venting your crankcase vapors externally. Well, today we're gonna put some numbers to that because we've got some new toys. We got a temp gauge, we got a carbon monoxide and oxygen sensor, and we're gonna see just how detrimental it is to feed those hot, oily, oxygen depleted gases into your intake. So this is an exciting video. I like to mm -hmm. improve things. I like to constantly improve things. And the only way you can know if you improve something is if you can measure. Right. You know, uh, I used to be able to do a quarter mile in 10 seconds, and I can do it in 9.2 seconds. It's measurable. I, it improved. Sure. Okay. So, uh, of course, we've been talking about uh, external breather systems for uh, a decade and a half now and about how they're mm -hmm. beneficial because they keep the oil from going in and carboning up your piston. They also make the, they keep the intake air temperature lower. They keep it from mm -hmm. being too hot. And we all know that the cooler the engine runs to a to point, the stronger it runs. Anybody who's ridden in the winter mm -hmm. time knows that's, their bike runs stronger right. in the winter because right. it's colder. And then the other is, is that you want to have oxygen rich air in there. And with that, an external breather system, you're pumping oxygen depleted air back into your intake. And we've been saying that everybody knows that it's sort of common knowledge among people right. who are engine knowledgeable from back in the day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we've never actually measured it. We That's did right. do the balloon test. Remember yeah, the balloon where we test? we measured the volume that where comes out. we measured out. the volume that was yeah. coming out. We'll put that video up in the corner here. But what we have are two toys that measure three different things. Right. And the other day, we used these devices on two different bikes. One was a Gen 1 M8, uh, Nathan's Road Glide. And the other one was Devin's Gen 2 M8 mm -hmm. with a completely different breather system from Harley. And um, we measured both of them. So we're going to show those here in a second. But before we show what happened, I'm going to show you how these tools work. The first one is a simple probe, a temperature probe. So we just put this probe near where the air is coming out of the breather system that normally goes into the intake. Mm -hmm. Or it can go in the external breather system to measure how hot it was. So this is a simple one right here. We're going to look at some before and afters here in a minute. Here, here is the much more interesting one. Yeah. Okay. And this is a gas detector. And the two things that we use this for, there's an on-off switch here. And you can see it goes through its own um, diagnostics. And it gives a... Oh, it gives three different kind of alarms. Uh, uh, the alarm where the lights flashed, the alarm where it beeped, and then it buzzed. And you can see this has a clip. This is a, this is not a, we call it a toy, but this is a device that is used by people who work places where there might be air contamination. Yeah. And it's meant to wear on their pocket, in their pants or something. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have this tube. You can just have it be like this. There's the sensor inputs. And um, the two things that we bought this for are to measure oxygen content mm -hmm. in the air and carbon monoxide. That's right. That's right. Carbon monoxide is the uh, spent exhaust gases that don't go out the exhaust pipe, but go past your rings into your That's crankcase. Right and then go back into your intake. And when the carbon monoxide goes into the intake, what's that do? Much less oxygen, displaces volume. The more carbon monoxide you have in there, the less oxygen. Now so you can see that the oxygen content is at 20.9, and that's generally where it is in a non-polluted area at sea level. And so you'll just note when we start showing you the tests that we did, 20.9 is the percent of oxygen in the air. So right here, right now, 20.9% of the volume of the air is oxygen. And you can see the CO, which is for, uh, CO actually stands for carbon monoxide. 
there's no parts per million. See parts per million? There's no parts per million. There's no registered uh, carbon monoxide. Now, also, just like when an engine exhales, it produces carbon monoxide. Here's what happens when a person exhales. It also produces carbon monoxide. So I'm going to take this tube here, and I'm going to exhale into it. And you can see the oxygen content went down from 20.9 and it's alarming because the oxygen content's too low. It should be at 20.9, not 16.6. .6. So you can see that when I exhaled into the hose here, that what the air that I was exhaling was not 20.9% oxygen. Right. Okay, and you saw how the alarm went off. So that just gives you a little idea of how it works. Uh, it didn't register any carbon monoxide from me exhaling, but you'll see the engine does exhale carbon monoxide, and you'll see that go up. You may be asking yourself, well, what, is, what does that matter? You know, And a lot of people think that they're installing an external breather system just to prevent liquid oil carryover, and that is a big reason, but it's not the only reason, because as you'll see with these results, there's much more than liquid oil in there. There's a lot of carbon monoxide and a higher temperature, and it's just detrimental to performance. And again, the more carbon monoxide, the less oxygen content. Your bike consumes oxygen, it, 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 oxygen and fuel. It needs it. It, it needs it, it. Yeah, oxygen is flammable. That's right. Now, people will say, well, I've been, I can put 100,000 miles on my bike without venting externally. Maybe you can, but I assure you, the bike will run much more efficiently. Your bike will be much happier if it's all clean, oxygen-rich air going in there. So do we say you absolutely need an external breather system? No. Is it highly recommended? Yes, 100% highly recommended. And people would be like, well, we get this question a lot. Well, if it's supposed to be that way, Harley would make it that way. They can't. They can't. It's an EPA mandate. If you bought an older Har Harley before all those EPA mandates, they vented right up to the atmosphere. And that's a lot of, a lot of where the uh, no notoriety for leaking oil comes from because they actually did. That oil carryover just spent out into the atmosphere. So we're gonna get into some pretty interesting results. Um, the day we did these tests, actually, uh, it was in the low 70s. So keep that in mind when you see these temperature readings. So obviously this device measures more than oxygen content and carbon monoxide, but that's what we're using it for. So you can see on Nathan's uh, Gen 1 uh, 2020 Rogue Glide with an M8 engine in it, that um, his oxygen content in the air, just the general air was 20.9, but when we put the hose up to where the head was breathing out. Yeah, so it didn't drop down to 16.5, so 16 and a half, so a notable drop in oxygen content. And then the other thing is, is that there's zero parts per million of carbon monoxide just out in the atmosphere. This thing won't measure above a thousand. A thousand is so dangerous and a thousand is, uh, is alarming so yeah. much. It just doesn't read right. past a thousand. So it tops out at a thousand parts per million, doesn't display a higher. So that was on the 2020 M8 Road Glide. Mm -hmm. So then we went to the 23 and a half Gen 2 121 variable valve timing, more efficient, the right. latest and greatest from Harley. Which actually vents almost directly from the crankcase. It, it, no, there's no yeah, head breather system on the Gen yeah, 2. Yeah, it doesn't go through. And we've done a whole video on that that we'll put up in the corner. Mm -hmm. But this, when we put the uh, tube next to the breather system, yeah. so it dropped from 20.9, it dropped like 25%, almost 25% reduction in mm -hmm. oxygen content. Yeah, yeah. And what did the carbon monoxide go to? It also maxed out. Oh, maxed out at <laughs> yeah. a thousand. Yeah. So this is air that's going into your intake in OEM condition. Yeah. There's no possible way, forget the oil. You may have oil carryover, you may not, but there is just no possible way that that engine is gonna run as strong no. or as efficiently with you trying to reburn something that's already burned right. carbon monoxide 
and with the lower oxygen content. And, and think of the erratic readings it's causing to all the sensors in there, the IAT, the MAP sensor. Think of how erratic. Think of how much easier those sensors can do their job. If they if have clean air. Only clean air. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that, that's two things we measured both with this, um, but we also measured the... Temperature. Temperature. Yeah. And what was the ambient temperature that It was day? in the low 70s. So keep in mind, a lot of, these bikes run pretty good in the low 70s and 60s. They run pretty damn good. I can tell you this. I noticed the difference in my bike at 70 versus 90 plus. I can feel the difference. And I think a lot of you guys would agree to that. So that's what's very interesting about this is on Nathan's bike, the 2020 Road Glide exceeded 100 degrees, got up to over 103 degrees. So it was 70 some degrees outside and we just put this up. The temperature, we just put this temperature probe up next to uh, the where it vents, mm -hmm. and it went to 103. Right. Same thing on Devin's Gen 2, got up over 103 degrees. And, uh, I mean, think about that. These and bikes it, run much better with cool, clean air. That's hot. Yeah, and these bikes weren't air. even warmed up. No, 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 I no. Mean, they'd only been running 5, 10 minutes at the most. So... Anyway, it was a fun video to make. It shows proof positive yeah. that the air coming out of there is much hotter than the ambient <laughs> yeah. air, yeah. which is not good for performance. And then you, uh, we didn't know. We knew that the oxygen content dropped. We didn't know by how much, but now we're seeing it's dropping like by 25%. That's right. So that's crazy. It, very bad for efficiency of the engine and for generating power right now again we're not saying you absolutely need an external breather system but if you would like for your bike to run much more efficiently better performance better fuel economy better throttle response and just overall improve longevity you can check out dkcustomproducts.com i'll put a link to a, a fitment page we put together so whatever air cleaner you have just follow the information at that link and we'll give you information on how to vent it externally if you found this video useful or interesting please give it a thumbs up mm -hmm. please share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe That's right. and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. It helps us out a lot, and um, yeah. it would just be very appreciated if you would do that. That's right, because YouTube loves it. Every time you hit that thumbs up, every time you hit the notification bell, it helps us out. We can make more content like this to help you guys out. Yeah. Now, if you have any questions at all about fitting an external breather system onto your current air cleaner or upgrading your air cleaner entirely, again, you can shoot me an email to support at dkcustomproducts.com or you can give us a call at the office. We have an entire customer service team ready to help you out. 662-252-8828. You all right, safe out there.